Welcome to Code Report. I'm your host, Connor Hookstra. Before we jump into things, I wanted to mention two things. One, I'll be posting the next week's weekly Sunday episode, either one or two days late, as I'm going to be out of town next weekend. And two, I wanted to highlight a comment that was posted on the previous Sunday weekly episode uh, where I covered a problem from Code Forces called Vasia and Multisets. And for the Python solution, Tenshing Lee pointed out that it's more idiomatic to use the collections.counter data structure in Python and that we can also initialize ones and has underscore GT2 a little bit cleaner. So if we just look at that code, we can basically see the difference. So instead of using a hash map uh, and then sort of manually counting each of the elements, we can use uh, the counter collection, which you can do in a single line, and then uh, instead of manually counting ones and setting has underscore g2, we can just use sum and any, the two algorithms there. So thank you so much to Chen Xing Li. Uh, I love comments like this where they basically point out improvements in code that I've written because it helps me learn and then I can talk about them in future episodes uh, so that you guys learn a little bit more as well. Last week we had three contests and one contest ongoing. On Saturday we had from Code Chef the lunchtime contest and in the evening from Leak Code contest 104 and on Sunday we had from Top Coder the SRM 738 contest and throughout the week we also had from Hacker Earth the September circuits. Taking a look at the top 10 leaderboards, we had uh, many familiar names on multiple top 10 leaderboards. Uh, most notably, we had Gennady, aka Tourist, who placed first in both Division 1 contests, uh, the one from Code Chef and the one from Top Coder, and he placed second in the September Circuits contest. We also had Yui placing fourth and first in the Division 1 Code Chef lunchtime contest and Leak Code contest, respectively as well as Natsugiri placing 5th in the Code Chef Div 1 and in 6th in the Leak Code Contest. And furthermore, in the Division 1 Top Coder Contest, we also had Scott Wu, Petra, XUDYH, and Umnik rounding out the top 5. In today's video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem 3 from the Leak Code Contest 105 problem entitled Word Subsets. The problem states we are given two arrays A and B of words. Each word is a string of lowercase letters. Now say that word B is a subset of word A if every letter in B occurs in A, including multiplicity. For example, WRR is a subset of warrior but is not a subset of world. Now say a word A from A is universal if for every B in B, B is a subset of A. Return a list of all universal words in A. You can return the words in any order. And the constraints for this problem, the length of our arrays, A and B, are going to be up to 10,000. Uh, the length of each of our words in those arrays is going to be uh, no more than 10 characters. Uh, the characters will be lowercase, and all the words are unique. So let's take a look at the examples that LeetCode gave us. So here are five examples. Uh, taking a look at the first one, we're given uh, a list of words in A and then a list of words that just happen to be characters in this case in B. And basically what the question is asking is which of the words uh, in A have all of the words in B uh, as subsets of them. So when they're only characters, basically it's asking which of the words in A have each of uh, these characters. So uh, you can see that the only three words of the five that were given that have both an E and an O are Facebook, Google, and leak code. And the second example is very similar. Uh, when we get to the third example, we have an actual uh, string that is more than just a single character. And uh, it's E and double O, so of course Facebook and Google are going to be the only two uh, words in our list A that have both of those substrings. And if we skip down to the bottom here, we can see that we now have three uh, strings in B that are multiple characters, EC, OC, and CEO. And note that up until sort of the first three examples that we looked at, uh, the order was consistent. Um, you can find the double O back to back, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. So CEO uh, doesn't actually show up you know, in order in any of our words. Uh, but in total, all of the characters do in both Facebook, CEO, and LeetCode, ECO. Um, 
So note that too, the first two substrings are subsets of uh, the last string here, or the first two strings are subsets of the last string here. So really, just by checking if uh, the final string in B, um, if the characters in that show up in one of the words in our list A, would be sufficient. So it might seem pretty straightforward on how to solve this, sort of just go through each of our words, and then for each of those words, go through our uh, list B and check to make sure that all of the characters in each of our words show up in the word that we're currently checking. But if we go back to the constraints of this problem, it's it shows that uh, the length of our list A and B can be up to 10,000. And uh, so doing that algorithm, the sort of brute force checking, is not going to be sufficient to pass this. 10 to the 5 in a quadratic algorithm, which is what I just explained, is going to TLE. Um, so we need to be a little bit smarter uh, in terms of solving this problem. So what we're going to do in order to solve this problem is basically combine all of our strings in B into a single, we'll call it string, but really it's just a character count. So what it would end up looking like is we would uh, initialize a vector or an array, uh, depending on the language you're using, and initially uh, each of the character counts, so this will be a vector of length 26, and each of the indices or elements is just going to map to a count of a certain character. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and calculate sort of a temporary uh, count uh, vector, and then we'll loop through and sort of set each of the elements in our uh, total vector to be the uh, maximum of our temporary and our current. So it's very simple for the first example because we only have a single character in each of our strings. So for the first one, we'll, after constructing sort of our, our count vector for E, we're just gonna end up setting uh, E to one here and for O, we're going to set O to 1 here. So there's real, there's no real overlap in this example. If we do the same thing for our third example, you can see after our first string, uh, we'll end up setting uh, E to 1, and we'll end up setting, after our second string, setting uh, O to 2. And so once we've constructed this, instead of having to go through every single string in B, we just need to go through this uh, sort of vector uh, that keeps track of the count of the characters across all of our strings and see if those exist in A. Uh, but most importantly, we take a look at our last example here. Uh, initially, everything's set to zero. After we go through EC, our string EC, uh, we'll have C equal to one and E equal to one. After we go through OC, uh, because we already have a C and it's the exact same count, we're not gonna do an increment here. It's basically just gonna, like I said, take the maximum of the current value and whatever we get from our temporary uh, vector count. Uh, but we do have an O here, so uh, at this point, O will become 1. And for CEO, uh, we're going to end up with just 1, 1, and 1, which is already what we have here, so there'll be no change. So that's sort of the only catch once you figure out that you need to sort of condense uh, our strings in B into a single sort of representation that we're going to use a vector for this. So let's take a look at our code. So here is our C++ solution. We have our function word subsets that takes two vector of strings, A and B, and returns a vector of strings, which are going to be our universal words. And at the top here, we're declaring V, which, as I mentioned in our visual solution, uh, is going to have 26 elements. And then we loop through for each word in B, and we're going to create our sort of temporary uh, count of each of the characters. And we do that by just uh, looping through each of the characters in our current word, and then uh, getting the index that maps to our current character, which we can just do uh, by taking the character and subtracting uh, the character A. And then we do an uh, post increment here. And then once we've done this, uh, we basically loop through each of the elements in our vector v, and we set the current element to be equal to uh, the maximum of what we have from before, which initially is just zeros, and to the temporary i. And so we're going to do that for each word. And then once we get through this loop, we will have our vector v uh, created. Then we come to our second loop, but just before that, we declare our vector of strings answer, which we're going to return at the end. And then similar to our first loop, we're going to loop through every word in A, uh, declare or con sort of a construct a temporary vector count the same way we did in the first one, 
And then once we've done this, we're going to declare a Boolean good initialized to true. And all we have to do is make sure that the count of the number of characters in our uh, current word that we're looking at is greater than or equal to what we have in this vector v. If at any point uh, the number of characters in our current word w that we've got from our list a is less than uh, in our vector v, that means it's not a subset um, and therefore it's not universal. So we just set good to false and then we're going to use this boolean basically to uh, figure out whether we need to insert this into the uh, vector of strings that we're going to return. So if it's good, we push back. If not, we don't do anything. And at the end of this, we just return our answer. So usually I wait till the end to talk about the time complexity, but it's a little bit clearer while we're on the C++ solution. So uh, for our first loop, it's basically going to be the number of words, which we'll call n times uh, in this loop the number of characters in our word which could be up to 10 uh, we'll call that w and then uh, up to 26 characters for our second loop so that's going to be n times in brackets uh, w plus 26 and it's going to be basically the exact same thing for our second loop so if we write the full thing out it'll be big o of n times w plus 26 uh, plus the same thing, but the 26 is a constant so we can drop that so at the end of the day We end up basically with big O of n times W. We can drop the 2 uh, as well So note that here W is 10 the upper bound on W is 10 and the upper bound on n is 10 to the fifth so uh, Overall we're basically going to have at most 10 to the six operations Which is less than 10 to the 8 which is usually what the limit is in terms of number of operations that can be executed so let's take a look at our Java solution. Very, very similar to our C++ solution. Uh, the only difference being really that uh, we have some syntactical, uh, you know, two car array, uh, because in order to use our enhanced for loop, we need to do that. Um, and we don't have the define that shortens our for loop. So we have an extra line here, but basically everything else is the exact same. Uh, and the last solution is the Python solution. Uh, which is much, much cleaner, in my opinion, compared to the C++ and Java solutions. And that's because uh, there is a collection in Python called a counter, which is basically exactly what we want and what we were uh, doing manually in the previous solutions where we're trying to get a count of every single character that shows up in our string. So we can basically automatically get this set up uh, by just setting up our v equals collections dot counter and then initializing it as so and then we can do this in, and you you're doing this by doing collections dot cover uh, counter and then passing in uh, the w here and you can see you do it again as well uh, so it's the exact same idea we basically just have to write less code because python provides us with this collections dot counter uh, so this is a good trick uh, to keep I, or to keep in mind, I wish C++ had a similar data structure because we end up doing a lot of this in competitive coding where you're declaring a hash map to store the number of times a integer or a character shows up in some sort of corresponding data structure. And uh, thanks to Lee215, I referenced his uh, solution for the uh, Python solution here. Taking a look at the contest happening next week, on Tuesday we have from Hacker Rank the Hour Rank contest. On Thursday we have from Code Forces round 513. On Friday we have from Hacker Earth the October Easy contest and also the start of the long challenge from Code Chef. And on Saturday we have the Weekly League Code contest 105. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.